The SCA exam, known as the Simulator Consultation Assessment, is the new exam that all GP trainees will now need to pass in order to become a GP, and it presents some new, unique challenges. This is particularly because the exam is going to take place in your practice, and it's important to know how you can help prevent some serious problems that may occur and make this the best experience both for the trainees, for the simulated patients, and for the practice to make sure that, that person can pass with the best possible opportunities. In this episode, I'm going to give you key hints and tips you will not get from anywhere else about how to make that process so much easier, so much better, and also mean this will be less stress for everybody involved. Let's take in hands your primary care and learning. So in this episode, I'm going to cover seven key things that you need to do in order to make sure you have the best tech opportunity to pass the SCA exam. And all of these are going to be key things that if you don't do them, it's probably going to cause you a problem. In addition, I'm also going to give you two key tips that you will not get from anywhere else. One's one of my best tips for doing video consultations. And number two is a piece of kit that will make this whole process so much easier for you in practice. Now, obviously, if you are sitting the SCA exam, you're going to need a computer. And there are some rules and regulations that you need to know about when it comes to the computer that you use. Number one, unlike my main tip of recommending you always have two screens in practice at least, unfortunately, you cannot do that for the SCA exam. You should only have one screen available. And so actually, the the best way to sit this exam in my perspective is going to be that you actually use a laptop and not the computer based at the practice. I'll come to the reason why in a little bit, but you will find this is much easier to do in your practice. So if you have access to a laptop, use that for the consultation assessment. There are some additional requirements around resolution, so it needs to be 1024 by 768 resolution. Most laptops nowadays should have that. It should run Windows 10. Again, most laptops should have that as well. And it clearly needs to be able to link up to the internet because that's how the examination will run. Speaking of the internet, that's our second key thing that you need to be aware of. Because the exam takes place over an online platform, you need to have really good internet. And I would highly recommend that you check this well in advance of actually sitting the exam itself. How can you do that? Well, good easy way to do that is go to speedtest.net. It's a great website. I'm going to show you what it looks like right here in my practice. And the reason why you need to check this in particular is because in your wired practice or practice Wi-Fi system, whatever you're using, you may not have enough download or upload speed in order to run the platform the exam is running from. The specified requirements are 10 megabytes download and 4 megabytes upload. In particular, check the upload speed because most internet providers will tell you about the downloads. They won't tell you about the upload speed. As you can see in my practice, the practice internet only just about copes with it, but actually the Wi-Fi is far better for doing that. So therefore using it on the laptop through the Wi-Fi is going to be so much easier. Important to remember, most wired desktops may not have access to the practice Wi-Fi as well if you need to swap. Now a micro tip here is going to be to check this roughly the similar time that you're going to be sitting the exam. This is because you don't know what load the internet is going to have in your practice when you're actually sitting it and you want to make sure that it is viable at the time that you're taking your exam. Additionally, if you have the options of a backup, try and make sure that happens because you do not want the internet to go out whilst you're sitting your exam, do you? Next up, when we're talking about an online examination, it's really important that you can hear the patient and the patient can hear you. So we need to focus on the sound. There are two aspects to this. You need to be able to hear the patient and the patient needs to be able to hear you. When it comes to hearing the patient, most laptops and desktops should have a decent enough speaker that allow that to happen. However, if you're concerned, having a headset is definitely a good way to go. The additional thing with most headsets, they also tend to have microphones that allow you to be heard really effectively and making sure that these plug in so your laptop or desktop that you're going to use is going to be really important. If you want to really optimize your sound, then I would recommend considering a condenser based microphone. This is because you'll easily be able to pick up your sound as you're talking. You don't have to worry about necessarily the placement, but it'll still be really high quality sound for the patient to hear. My personal recommendation for this is the Ryzen Mini. It's relatively cheap at about 37, 40 odd pounds and absolutely will do the job for you. It's also relatively small and innocuous, so it won't take up a lot of space on your desktop. Alternately, as I said, a decent headset, set of AirPods, that kind of stuff, they will absolutely do the job well for you. So now the simulated patient can definitely hear you and you can hear them. Now we need to make sure they can see you. And for that, you're going to need a good camera. More specifically, you're going to need a good webcam. Now, if you're using the laptop like I recommended, most laptops may have a built-in webcam. However, I would not recommend using that. 
The reason for that is one of the specifications is that you must be able to turn the webcam around to get a 360 view. You do not need a 360 webcam. That's really hard to come by, but what you must be able to do is to turn the webcam around so the examiners can pre-screen your room. We'll come to reason why in a second. And therefore having a separate webcam is going to be a really important part of the setup for your SCA exam. When it comes to a situation like this, my recommendation will always be the Logitech C920. It is my go-to webcam, high definition, great pickup. And if you wanted to, you can also use this as your microphone. It's got a reasonably decent microphone built in. I mean, I love this webcam so much, I've got two of them. And it's really important that you set it up in a way that it can be used effectively. The best way to do this is either to put it on a stand or use the flip out base so that you can put it on the screen of your laptop. However, if you want the best way to use it, don't worry, come into that in tip two. Now I'm gonna cover a couple of quick hints and tips to use when it comes to using a webcam properly during a video consultation. And one of the best ones to do is to try and look at the camera itself and not the screen. This is because it improves the empathy link that you may have with the simulated patients because it makes them feel like you're actually looking and talking to them. It is a bit of a skill though. So if you want one of my super hacks to make video consultations even more effective, then simply put, grab a post-it note and stick it on top of the webcam itself and simply put an arrow pointing, look here. The reason for that, it will focus your attention on the camera aperture. It'll help to improve that empathy engagement. If you really want to maximize it, behind the webcam itself, stick a photo of somebody that makes you want to smile. Gives you something to focus on, but also makes you a little bit happier. If you're smiling during the exam, chances are the patient will be too. And part of the reason for doing that is it'll help to frame you so much more better. And that's the next section we're gonna talk about, which is the framing of the image that you're showing. What do I mean by this? Well, it's what the patient will actually see. It's really important you test this before you sit the actual exam and look at what things are for example, in the background. Again, this is a key point that's focused on the guidance. The background needs to be clear of various different items, so you can't have any clinical information there. You definitely shouldn't have any loose plots or anything else to distract people. And the full list of that is on the links down below that you can check out the guidance itself. But also having yourself framed in a way that looks attractive, that looks inviting, that looks sensible is gonna be really important as well because it will make people want to look at the screen rather than avoid it and avoid that cognitive bias against you potentially as you sit the exam. So try and frame the image as best as possible. And maybe this may even mean moving the things around the room a little bit more effectively, and hence the really cool reason for having a laptop to help you do that. The next big thing you need to focus on is lighting. So you've got your sound, you've got your image, you need to be able to see you nice and clear. So having good, decent lighting. Ideally a light shining onto you will help to make you more visible to the person looking at the screen. But also important, you don't have a really strong light behind you or coming from the side that will distract things. In particular, sunlight may be a bit of an issue. So being in a situation where you can close the curtains, put the lights on and have good lighting coming onto you is gonna be really important. It could absolutely be sunlight coming onto you. And that's often one of the tips I've said to many people when it comes to doing video consultations and meetings. But you also want consistent lighting. And don't forget, you're potentially gonna be doing this exam for a couple of hours. So having a light in front of you to give you a good fill is really important. And that brings me on to my second key tip. If you wanna combine all the advice I've given you so far on this video, then absolutely consider grabbing this lovely little webcam stand that I use when I film almost all of my videos. As you can tell, it bolts onto the desk, so this doesn't have any stability issues. It's got a built-in ring light that gives decent amounts of fill. It can be charged and powered by a single USB cable. So you can either plug this into your computer or you can plug it into a separate power socket. And it's got a suitable port at the top to bolt on your C920 webcam or any other screen webcam that also allows the lovely 360 spin that you need to have to sit your exam. This lovely piece of kit is approximately about 20 quid. It's one of the best investments I've ever made. And if you want links to it, check out down below in the show notes to get those links for an affiliated link, which does give me a small amount if you use that. If not, just search for Google for it. But there are a few, and this is definitely the best one I've found so far. Now, just before I cover my final key tip, if you have found this video useful, do leave a like down below. Let me know that this is actually useful content and definitely share it with your colleagues, especially your peers in practice, fellow trainers, fellow GP trainees about to sit the exam. And let me know in the comments which of these tips you found most helpful and unexpected as well. And my last key tip for all of you about to sit the SCA exam is everything I've just talked about, test, test, 
test. You need to test all of this stuff before the actual day of the exam. If you rock up expecting all this to work, we all know tech never works the way you want it to at the time that you need it to. So making sure you have tested every single piece of this beforehand run it through a Zoom meeting, run it through a Teams meeting, it doesn't really matter. As long as that all works, this will work fine and absolutely you need to check all of this before you sit your exam because you do not want to sit there the day of the exam and it all go wrong. Now hopefully those tips will absolutely help you nail the SCA exam. And if you want some more information about kit that you may find useful working as a general practitioner, or regardless of what role you have in general practice, check out this video right here. We're definitely going to give you my best tips of equipment to have working in general practice and some of the best cost items available as well.